Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Zora wrote in at the beginning of the hour and said, what would you describe as an autism friendly co-working space? What a question. Wow. That's an awesome question. So I assume that I just want to make sure I'm understanding the question. Um, so you're talking about an adult who is, uh, and, and how do you make an environment uh, kind of friendly or appropriate to accommodate an adult who's working in this environment, right? And it's, it's a really great uh, question. And it's fortunately, thank God, I mean, I just love the fact that this has now become an issue um, where some of the larger companies have actually asked me and I've done training for some of these very, very big companies like Oracle, for instance, where they have you know thousands of employees and finally, their HR departments of some of these larger companies are paying attention and saying, hey, there are lots of individuals with autism who have not only should, should join our workforce, but they even have a specific talents that we would like to benefit from. And how do we make the workplace uh, more accommodating to them? So there's a lot of different things. And, and I'll just go through and kind of talk a little bit about the different things that I've suggested to some of these larger companies. First of all, every individual on the spectrum, as you all know, is different, right? So you have to make this a little bit more, uh, there's some things that are general and then some things that are more personalized, right? For example, in general, it would be really good if there's a lot of structure in the job. So every individual will benefit from knowing exactly what is expected of them, exactly what their schedule is, uh, exactly what their due dates are, all this kind of stuff. And in particular, it would be lovely if they could have a coach or a mentor whom, with whom they could meet every day, every week, whatever the company can, can uh, afford or offer. Um, and that individual would be able to go through, answer any of their questions ahead of time and also guide them and say, you know, these are the great things that you did last week. And these are the things that you probably want to be working on next week. And let me tell you, this is not just applicable to individuals on the spectrum. If a company can provide this kind of feedback to its employees, I guarantee you all employees will love this because it's, <laughs> because it's very frequent guidance and feedback and attention, right? And, and the thing that I think most employees don't like and the reason that most employees leave is because they don't get attention, and nobody listens. They feel like no one's listening. No one's giving me feedback. I don't know how to improve my work, et cetera, et cetera. So providing that kind of coaching is, I think, one of the most important things. Now, in addition, it would be really important to look at the specific needs of the individual. In general, we have a lot of individuals who have sensory issues, right? They, they're dysregulated from a sensory perspective. So how nice would it be if there was a quiet lounge where the individual could actually leave their job, their desk, and go to this lounge, maybe put on some headphones for lunch break and relax and be able to kind of compose themselves again. So that is kind of an important thing. Secondly, it would if the individual has if we're aware of or can determine the specific sensory issues they have, for example, someone is very, very sensitive to the sound of doors opening and closing, then make sure we're not putting their desk right in front of uh, a, oh. Did you lose us? We still have yeah, you. Yeah, you still have me. Great, great. Yes, okay, I, I think I'm, that's perfect. I'm gonna try to uh, keep going then. Can you still hear me? Yep, we still can hear you. Right, 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 right. Oh. Oh, 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 and now we have an echo. 
I think I'm on twice. There we go. So basically, uh, it would be important. Like I remember, actually, we had someone working at Card who had this issue where their desk was right in front of the bathroom area, right? And it was so distracting to this individual because people kept going in and out, in and out, and the person could not focus on their own work because it was very distracting. There's a lot of things like that that we can pay attention to. I mean, this applies, Shannon, as you know, to also classrooms, right? Yes. And the position of the person is so important for what they attend to. And by the way, that also goes to other things like accommodations that are made in the classroom can also be made in the workspace. The individual could be given, like, you know how in the workspace, if you have back problems, they'll give you a standing desk, for instance. Well, the individual with autism could request uh, a, a noise canceling headphones, or they could request that their booth be surrounded or that they don't have fluorescent lighting right above their head or all these types of things that are disturbing to them from a sensory perspective. So let's try to make the work environment peaceful Let's try and, and welcoming, uh, accommodate that for the individual and then uh, give them a coach who is going to help them organize their schedule, understand what is coming next, understand kind of, you know, what are the expectations and, and when they're due, how to even make a calendar for themselves or how to read a calendar and so on. And then, of course, as as with anything else, the content of their job, right? So if it requires, and most of our folks are very, very good with technology, but I find that even in uh, a lot of work environments, people are put in positions where they really don't know uh, their job. Like they don't know, not a lot of people don't know how to make an Excel worksheet uh, or how to, you know, move things around on an Outlook or invite people to Zoom or just basic things like that, right? And making sure that all of that information is reviewed and taught so that the person is actually in a, in a place where they feel comfortable with what they're doing and it's rewarding, right? So all of these things, you know, giving the individual the ability to be able to ask for what is important to them uh, and, and just making sure that the job is rewarding. I think those, that's what I would consider a good workplace. I love that. I, I love that you said the truth, which is doing these accommodations would make it happier place for all employees. Everyone. And I also, you know, one of the things that years ago when they started having Julia on Sesame Street and we had the puppeteer um, yeah. that plays Julia on and she is a mom of someone who's on the spectrum. And I, I remember we were saying, we were talking with her and we said, you know, the amaz most amazing thing about this is that in 30 years time, the mm -hmm. HR directors are all going to be kids who watch Julia on Sesame Street and it won't be odd or strange or weird for them to make an accommodation. They'll just be like, oh, that's what this individual needs. And I think that's what we need more than anything else is people who are willing in the HR departments who are willing to listen and willing to make accommodations. We have that in some places now. I mean, obviously, look at people like Dr. Stephen Shore, yeah, who's been so a college good. professor forever, but he attributes that to the fact that, you know, he can't stand fluorescent lights over his head like they make him crazy. And when he started to teach, he said, I'm going to need to wear a baseball hat while I teach. Yep. And, yep. and it was a time when you didn't wear hats indoors. I, I know I'm dating myself here, but, you know, that was considered, you know, Impolite. lack of respect. Yeah. And and a, certainly a college professor would not wear a baseball hat while teaching. And his college said, is that what you need to make it work? Go for it. And look at him. He said this illustrious career. And, and what would have happened if they didn't? So, I, you know, I, I love everything that you said, but I, I, I love the idea of us all being accommodating um, and, and putting that set of lenses on for everyone it would be a better world. Absolutely. Amazing. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. 
See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on autismnetwork.com. We hope to see you there.